Hello and welcome to lesson number six in the After Effects Expressions training series. This lesson is going to focus on converting audio into keyframes. Uh, this lesson here is going to focus on lip sync using a picture of myself as well as me telling a half funny bear joke, which goes something like this. The bear walks into a bar and says, bartender, give me a beer and some of those peanuts. Bartender says, Hey, why the big pause? <laughs> All right, so what we need to be able to do is drop some audio into After Effects, convert that audio data into keyframes that we can use, grab those keyframes and apply that to the Y axis as well as the rotation of this mouth that I've cut out in Photoshop. So that's what we're going to do, and let's get it done. So here's my starting artwork. I've got a simple solid that i uh, put in the background so when you see through the mouth there is something back there. And uh, I've got uh, a headshot that I cut out in Photoshop and then in After Effects I just drew a simple mask around the head and then more or less an inverted version of that on the mouth. So now I can move this mouth around as I see fit. I can also turn off the visibility of the mask so I can just move the mouth like that and make it move like this. And what we're going to do is make this mouth move with keyframes that we get from audio. So let me drop this bear joke and the little horn sound effect and cue this up at the end. It's all about timing. Hey, why the big pause? Okay, so what we want to do is be able to get this audio this audio amplitude specifically, and turn this into keyframes. And the way we can do this is by right clicking on any audio layer, going to a keyframe assistant, and selecting this convert audio to keyframes. What it's going to do is create a null object, as you see there, right in the center, right on top of my nose. And if we twirl this open, we'll see in the effects we have left channel, right channel, and both channels. What it did was it looked at all the audio in our composition, both the left channel and the right channel, and then combined those into both channels here. So we have them both separately as well as combined. Uh, I don't really have any stereo information here at all, so I'm just going to get rid of left and right, and we'll just use both channels combined. And I will rename this audio. So if I look at this in the graph, it's like that we can see that this slider is moving right in sync with the audio. A bear walks into a bar and says, bartender, give me a beer. So where we have silence, the slider is down at zero. So we need to be able to use this slider to drive the Y position of the mouth. So I'm going to hit B to show the position of the mouth and create an expression. And let's just pick whip this slider right here. Now After Effects is going to create a little variable called temp which it assigns to the audio slider up here and then maps that temp variable to both X and Y right here X and Y. Now we don't want X and Y we just want Y. We want this moving up and down. So I want 0 in the X and what I'm going to do is just have this add. So value which is the existing value, this would be a two value array, plus zero, we're not adding anything to x, and then this temp variable, we are uh, grabbing and adding to y. So as this slider is moving here, which is just the audio amplitude data, it's going to drive the y position of the mouth. It's working pretty well. So if I play this, a bear walks into a bar and says, bartender, give me a beer and some of those peanuts. Bartender says, hey, why the big pause? <laughs> okay, now, what happens when we convert audio to keyframes is that it actually converts all of the audio, regardless of which layer we select to use as our layer to go to the keyframe assistant. And even if I get rid of something or delete it, this is not a live kind of thing. If I remove or add audio, this is not going to update itself to reflect the audio in the scene. It's a one-time process. When I convert audio to keyframes, it converts to keyframes, and that's that. If we want to change the audio, we need to go back and readjust the keyframes. Now, 
what I need to do is go in and remove that very last sound effect because that is not where I am talking. That is the sound effect where the horn is right there. So I'm going to select that area of the keyframes of that horn and delete them. And on this very last keyframe, I want to make sure this goes back to zero. So now, if I play this, Bear walks into a bar and says, Bartender, give me a beer and some of those peanuts. Bartender says, hey, why the big pause? All right. Now, to control rotation, I can go in and select my rotation and create an expression for rotation. And what I'll do is just use a simple wiggle with a frequency of 1. And then for the amplitude, I will just pick whip that slider. So as that slider moves to a greater value, there will be a lot of uh, wiggle. And as that slider moves down to 0, there won't be any wiggle at all. i got to close this out with another parentheses. And if I play this, a bear walks into a bar and says, Bartender, give me a beer and some of those peanuts. Bartender says, hey, why the big pause? Now, what if I needed to make adjustments to that keyframe data that was generated by the lip sync? I've got a new composition here with an awesome drawing of a robot, I guess. And I've got the same audio laid out in the same fashion. So let me go in here and select the keyframe assistant and convert the audio to keyframes and get rid of the left and right channels. We'll rename the slider here audio and I'm going to take a look at this mouth shape layer. Now what I'm going to do is drive the opacity of this mouth layer. Now obviously opacity is from 0 to 100. Let's take a look at this keyframe data that we've got from this audio to keyframes. If I chart this Looks like the greatest point is right over here. This is the highest peak, and that goes up to 48. Now, our opacity needs to go from 0 to 100, so we need to be able to remap these values so that 0 to 48 is actually adjusted to 0 to 100. And uh, as we learned in the last lesson, linear is a perfect way to do this. So, create an expression for the opacity here, and I'll use a variable t is equal to this slider value. Now I can use linear at the rate of t as t moves from 0 to 48 and will output 0 to 100. So as t moves from 0 to 48 we will output 0 to 100. So at that peak there we will have 100 percent opacity. A bear walks into a bar and says, bartender, give me a beer. So that works a beer. pretty well. A beer. I could even lower this so that we have a lower value defined as 100% opacity. A bear walks into a bar and says, bartender, give me a So it works just like that. This concludes Volume 2 of the After Effects Expressions Training Series. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got plenty up my sleeve, so I'm sure we'll see you around again.